Good morning, folks. The lead-up to the Saturn-Sun opposition has provided one of the calmer weeks in recent memory, but now the earthquakes are coming back as the alignment approaches. 6.7 near Antarctica, a six-pointer in Tonga with another one only below six range because of the USGS downgrade. The bigger rumble was likely an earth spot quake as this pressure situation is highly abnormal. Normally the lows are further south and the high is to the north. The downward push from the high pressure in the center with the lift upward on either side from the lows just imagine breaking a pencil in half. Same principle. Let's pull up the solar system scope to find that Saturn, Earth, Mercury, and Mars have been dancing towards the primary geometry of Sun, Earth, and Saturn as the weekend approaches. Let's take a peek at the Sun as the solar uptick should be coming soon as well. For now, my eyes set on the plasma filaments. We have three or four writhing around on the Earth-facing disk and at the limb, we can see a couple more coming in now, north, south, equatorially, all over. After sea flares were a pipe dream the last couple days, we are breaking back up into that range in the slightest. If we are to see a proper solar uptick, however, we'll need more sunspots, more growth, and probably some more magnetic mixing. Something else adding to the quake factors is the space energy from that magnetic storm we just had, now integrating into the Earth system. It is waning away now, which might seem odd given that solar wind speed kept climbing the last day, but compared to the last coronal hole stream about 6 or 7 days ago, it's 15-20% to 20 less intense. The next set of coronal holes, which add even further to the quake watch, enter the Earth-facing fourth of our star today and remain relevant for at least three to four days. Top link today is the latest from Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille. Having already set the stage for the Liquid Sun model, this advanced level manuscript begins breaking down the superiority of the theory over the standard model. Complex topics and analysis there. Then, we've got an oil spill reported on RSOE, and indeed the footage from the air at the coastline is not very encouraging. It is a relatively small area compared to the coastline as a whole, but still, this local ecosystem is completely destroyed and downstream systems should be affected as well. Also, we've got the April Global Climate Report. Read about the floods, the droughts, the record heat waves, and the record Antarctic ice. We are seeing about 55 to 70 percent of the map warmer than average, with only about 30 to 45 percent showing below average. But most importantly, there are both heat and cold records, like the coldest April ever recorded and the coldest start to 2015 ever recorded for that area there. Last but not least, folks, there are only 10 days left in pre-registration for observing the frontier this October in Pittsburgh. I find it disagreeable to pay more than you have to, 10 days left to pre-register. So let's jump to the weather where the severe alerts continue in the United States. First, we're up at the cloud layer to explain the cold aspect of the latest climate extremes event that is now chilling the east after those storms rolled through. Down at ground level, we see the convergence in Texas once more. I can't claim to focus anywhere else for tonight. Europe again at the cloud level because this is the strongest wind flow over this general area when the clouds match the wind drive this well don't even really need to explain it do i down in the southwest pacific we have the convergence line now shifted on top of new zealand and appearing to cut back right through australia this seems like another pretty good match to me remember folks if I miss some morning news in the coming days, it will be because of the birth of my daughter. Ten days left to pre-register for observing the frontier. These are your ground-level conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.